All right, guys, today we're talking about surface area of rectangular prism. You should have on your desk homework, notes, paper, and formula sheet. Today in class, and if you do not finish it for homework, you need to do page 11 and 12 and the vocab worksheet. Now, I'm going to say something about this vocab worksheet. The vocab worksheet has columns that you need to fill in. The answers are going to fit perfectly. So, there are 18 choices at the top. They will go exactly six in perimeter, six in area, and six in volume. So, if it doesn't work out that way, something is wrong. You are going to have a solids quiz on Tuesday. Now, I am going to hit pause. I want you to do these problems. All right, so now you guys have had time to work this out. Let's take a look at this to make sure everybody understands. Vertical slice, top to bottom. When I draw my slice, it is going to be a rectangle. The thing that people were doing wrong, this bottom part, this is the radius of four. The whole diameter is eight inches by 10 inches. So area, length times width. I'm going to cheat so we can move quickly. 80 inches squared. When I draw my horizontal cross section, you should have a circle with radius 4. So your work will be area equals pi r squared. Area equals 3.14 times 4 squared is 50.24 square inches. That's what you should have had for your warm up. All right. Here we go. Same type of problem as yesterday. But the numbers are changed. Hit pause right now. All right. When you do this, this is what your picture looks like. The radius of the entire bagel is 2.5. The radius of the hole in the center is 0.5. We're going to do the area of the entire thing minus the area of that hole. So pi r squared minus pi r squared. 3.14 times 2.5 squared gives you 19.625 minus 3.14 times 0.5 squared gives you 0.078285. And when you subtract, you get 18.84 inches squared because this is where the butter would be. All right. I need you to open your note packet to page 14. Now, yesterday we talked about volume of a prism. Volume is the capacity. I'm going to write I want you to write this down. Volume is capacity. What a solid hold. So think about a shoebox. If you took a shoebox to the beach and filled it up with sand, that would be its volume. Yesterday, we did that formula. Volume equals length times width times height. Do not forget when you do volume that your label is going to be cubic. Today, we are talking about surface area. Surface area of a solid is basically the net. It's the net that covers the solid. Now, this is the formula for surface area of a rectangular prism. Let's take a look at this. Basically, surface area is all the sides of the solid added up together, or all the faces and bases. Look, two, length, width. Isn't length and width this bottom and this top rectangles? There's two of them. Two, length, height. Length and height would be the front and the back. There's two of them. And width and height, would be these two faces, or faces, whichever way you turn it. There are two of them. So 
a rectangular prism is made up of two, four, six rectangles. And that's what that formula is. Now, surface area is the sum of all of the surfaces or faces, bases of a three-dimensional figure. You should be filling that in. All right, we are going to take a look at three examples. Units are always in inches squared. Written like that because it's the same as area. Now, I'm going to skip example one. I want you to go to example two in your notes, find this problem, but I want you to cross out whatever dimension was here and make that one foot. Cross out whatever was there and make that dimension one foot because I want to make a point. So, first thing you notice in this problem is that I've got inches, inches, and feet. Can I find either volume or surface area if I have different dimensions? No. So, would it make more sense with five inches, nine inches, and one foot to change these two to feet or to change that one to inches? Change that to inches. One foot is how many inches, guys? So, I'm going to write right here 12 inches. And that is the one we're using. So I'm going to ignore that one foot. Now, I want you to look at your formula sheet. We're going to write down, we're doing surface area. So we look for the formula that says SA. SA is, write this down, two length width plus two length height plus two width height. Now, this prop formula looks like it's super complicated. It really is not. It's just finding two of one side, two of the other, two of the other. But the hardest thing is making sure you put all the numbers in the right spots. So I'm going to label these. Length, width, and height. Does it matter which one you label what? No. But you need to keep them straight in this formula. So make sure you label them. So. Our surface area is two times, when they're right next to each other, it means times. Length, I called nine, times width, I called 12. Plus two times, length is nine, height is five. Plus two times, width is 12, height is five. Now, guys, I would punch that into my calculator exactly as it is but you need to be very careful. You should get surface area is 426 square inches. Two times 12 times 5, because width is 12, height is 5. No, volume is cubed, surface area is squared. The surface area is nothing more than all the areas of the faces and bases added together. It is still area. It is just more than one shape. All right. Here we go. Example three. Domingo built a toy box that is 60 inches long, 24 inches wide, and 36 inches high. He has one quart of paint that covers about 87, look at this, square feet of surface. Does he have enough to paint the toy box? Justify your answer. Well, First thing you need to say to yourself is this. If you've got a toy box and you're painting the outside, what are you looking for? The what of the toy box? The surface area, right? So I'm going to write my surface area formula down, and it's a rectangular prism. So two length width plus two length height plus two width height. Guys, make sure you are doing formula, work, answer, label. Now. Does anybody notice that the paint covers 87 square feet? 
but what are our length, width, and height given to us in inches? Look, our length is 60 inches, our width is 24 inches, and our height is 36 inches. What's the first thing I need to do to those three things? Convert them to feet. Very good, because our paint is telling us square feet. So how many feet is 60 inches? Divide it by five, or divide it by 12, and I get five feet. Divide this by 12, and I get two feet. And divide this by 12, and I get three feet. All right, go back to surface area. Formula, two times. Notice I have labeled these so I know which one is which. Five times two plus two times five times three plus two times two times three. When you punch this into your calculator, I'm just going to do it mentally. Four times five is 20 plus six times five is 30 plus four times three is 12. 50, 62 square feet. So, do I have enough to paint it? Yes. We have enough paint. Because the paint covers 87 square feet and our box, our toy box, is only 62 square feet. So, we have enough. Last example. When making a book cover, now this is old in school, okay, old days. Anwar wants to add an additional 20 square inches to the surface area to allow for overlap. How many square inches of paper will Anwar use to make a book cover for a book? That is 11 inches by 8 inches by 1 inch. So I'm going to draw a book. Okay. A book isn't a book, a rectangular prism, a, a fat book. So I'm going to call this length, width, height. It does not matter which one you call what, but as long as you put them in the formula the correct way. So surface area, two length width plus two length height plus two width height. So let's see what I did here. Two times eight times 11 plus two times eight times one, plus two times 11 times one. Make sure you use the right combination, because if you don't, your formula is going to be off. So our surface area is going to be Two hundred and fourteen square inches. But what does it say? He wants to add an additional twenty inches. So what do I have to do? So I'm going to have two hundred and thirty-four square inches needed. All right. Now, what I want you to do right now is you are going to work on page 11 and 12 in your homework packet you are going to check out in google when you are done you are going to do that worksheet and the columns should all be filled up we will check the worksheet in class